I'm sure everyone here has encountered the Enclave in a Fallout game at least once, if not many more times. First we defeated them once and for all on the west coast, then we defeated them once and for all on the east coast, and then, well they're still showing up aren't they? And how many times have we been able to play as them? One, maybe two? Not really. The best you can get is helping a bunch of retired soldiers with one last hurrah, and then LARPing as an Enclave soldier in 76. We keep seeing this faction, or at least references to it in Fallout 4's case, but we still have yet to actually join or help this faction. I'll tell you a little secret, the Enclave is actually my favourite faction. I know, I know, shocking. So it might surprise you to know that I am so goddamn sick of seeing these bastards everywhere. Now why is that? Well, partly because the art style change makes it physically painful to actually look at anything. The X01 looks terrible compared to the advanced power armor. And for some reason people still think they're the same thing. But the main reason why I'm tired of the Enclave is simply because they are everywhere. But where this differs from other factions is the difference in treatment by the developers. The best comparison would be the Brotherhood, as they are the most prevalent faction in the entire series. Out of the six mainline Fallout games, the Brotherhood has been a major faction in four of them, and a secondary faction in two of them. In my opinion, because I know many people are tired of the Brotherhood, I'm not really, because every game gives a different interpretation of them. Each Brotherhood chapter is separated by hundreds of miles from each other one, so they can develop vastly differently over time. Now that's not to say that all of them have been good interpretations, they've been passable at least. Fallout 3 was definitely a weak point, and Fallout 4 had a few kinks, mainly the way Bethesda portrayed them to be pretty evil when they're not at all. The strength comes from the different roots. Fallout 76, while many people hate it, its take on the Brotherhood is actually incredibly refreshing. The original Appalachian Brotherhood is probably the most realistic take on what an immediate post-war Brotherhood would look like. It evolved from a military unit and it still looks like a military unit. They still wore military uniforms and used military equipment with a touch of Brotherhood style in it. They forcefully requisition what they want from the population and do their best to neutralize any threats to the region. The second Brotherhood to appear in Appalachia shows a more fleshed out version of Fallout 3's Brotherhood Divided concept. It's two different interpretations of the religion, like Catholicism and Protestantism. Neither side is more right in terms of their beliefs. So you see what I'm saying, that the Brotherhood can be kept fresh. Now let's take a look at the Enclave. They also appear in multiple Fallout games. Out of the six main games, three of them have the Enclave as a major faction and one of them has the Enclave as a very minor, not even really a faction. Again, this means that there would be differing ideologies that develop among the different chapters. And yes, that does happen to a certain degree, but for some reason it always comes down to the Enclave being the bad guys. Again and again, they're the main villain. To this day, you still have not been able to properly join the Enclave. That's why I'm getting so tired of this faction because instead of the Enclave being portrayed as an ever lurking presence that has bases across the country and possibly the world, each differing slightly from each other in ideology and look while still retaining their core, instead we get a faction that doesn't even have an established core belief. I mean, what, they're assholes? Is that it? I made a video I think was pretty conclusive on the Enclave's actual purpose, but that was just my theory, there's nowhere where it concretely established that. It also just feels like the Enclave is placed wherever the writers want them and whenever they need a villain on call. Sure, it makes sense that the Enclave could be anywhere. The problem is that each iteration we encounter only seems to enforce the idea that there's no other bases or anything. Fallout 2 really just didn't mention anything about other Enclave bases. Alright, that's fine. It was the first appearance. They didn't know whether they wanted the Enclave to be a recurring faction or not. And hey, the Fallout Bible actually mentions the Enclave retreated around the globe. And then Fallout 3 rocked up. The Fallout Bible was denounced as canon, and we got this amazing line in Fallout 3. In the decades following the war, I watched as the remnants of the government retreated to the west coast. Are you kidding me? Just because Malcolm McDowell sounds amazing when delivering the line doesn't mean you can just get away with that. You're basically saying, hmm, Enclave on the continental US? 
Well, you know that oil rig that blew up on the west coast? They all fucked off over there ages ago. And then the few survivors came all the way back here. But you know, maybe it could just be the top honchos in the government, like the vice president and not everyone. Or it might mean the group from Raven Rock left and not the whole rest of the Enclave. Well, Fallout 76 answers that question. The White Spring Bunker only tried to contact Raven Rock and the rig. Now, maybe the recording where they try to contact other bases was lost, but we're already working with some massive maybes from the last game. What are we up to now? Maybe to the power of two? It's not very comforting when the future of this faction has you doing equations of maybes. It's seriously like the writers are shooting themselves in the foot. Other than the Fallout Bible, which is no longer canon, there's only been one mention of another Enclave base, and it was in New Vegas, not even made by Bethesda. It's made by the guys who made Fallout 2. Everything other than that in canon is at best blindly avoiding mentioning anything else Enclave. This problem wouldn't be nearly as bad if every Enclave faction we've encountered had it been wiped out. But by far the worst problem and what makes me so, so sick of them is that we cannot ever join them. Every time we've encountered them, they've either been completely hostile towards us, or they've ceased even being a faction. Which means that we all just have to stand there and watch the Enclave behind the glass, just out of reach. This leads to us having to savor every last piece of Enclave content because we never get the full experience of a faction. It's like digging through the garbage looking for scraps and then feeling sick because you've filled up on the scraps rather than there ever being a full meal. It's ridiculous that at this point we still haven't been able to side with, or at the very least help the Enclave. It's certainly not a matter of morality, you've always been able to commit atrocities in the Fallout games, and the newer games allow you to join more evil leaning factions anyway. Hell, you could even follow Eden's orders in Fallout 3 and put the modified FEV into the water purifier, and that's the most evil thing that Eden was going to do. The actual Enclave, that being the humans, were only trying to take control of the purifier to distribute the water. So Autumn's not allowed to distribute the water because the Enclave is too evil, but the player can poison the water because being evil is fun? Then in Fallout 4, the Brotherhood is made into a cheap copy of the Enclave, so it clearly isn't to do with morality. Other than morality, I'm not sure the actual reason for not implementing the Enclave as a playable faction. Maybe it's not all malicious intent. Maybe it's just turned out this way because of other factors. But then, why do they keep trying to make the Enclave so unappealing by portraying them as an almost cult-like organization? Fallout 4 straight up calling them a shadow government, and Fallout 76 robots calling the player member cheapens and trivializes the Enclave. When we first encountered the Enclave in Fallout 2, they gave off the idea that they were a single group that evolved out of the remaining government in the post-war world. The Fallout Bible, with the clarification the Enclave existed pre-war, was still ambiguous on what exactly it was. Whether it was a contingency for the highest level of government, a special division of the government that rose to power after the war, or even just a shadow government. We weren't told either way, and it added to the mystery around the Enclave. But no, now they're just an evil shadow government, except they're not. When the shadow government is made up of the president, his cabinet, and presumably many other high members of government, it's not a shadow government, it's THE government. And if they're so intent on making them a shadow government, well, where's the rest of the government? I'd be down to see a government remnant or high-level military faction based out of the many nuclear bunkers in the US. Or they could at least give us some greater detail on how exactly the Enclave took over after the war. Because either they were the top of the government, in which case they weren't a shadow government, or they had to wrestle away power from the actual government. We saw some of this in Fallout 76 with the Enclave executing the senators that made their way into the White Spring Bunker, but then, why would they even allow the Senators access when they didn't want any of them in there? Especially since the bunker was built by the Enclave. Frankly, I think the Shadow Government idea is absolute shit, and hope Bethesda comes to their senses and backtracks on it. But if they're going to force it in regardless, they could at very least make it more interesting. 
all of this comes together to make the Enclave a pretty half-baked faction. They have so many cool aspects, but time and time again they're trivialized, overused and written poorly. Going forward, even with being an Enclave fan, I don't want to see them much. They can maybe be in 76, or maybe they can be in the next Fallout game. Either way, if they're written well and actually embody a good example of the faction, then it would be perfect just to leave them that way for a good while. Let us explore new factions, new lands, new everything. And when the nostalgia kicks in down the road, then you can bring back the Enclave and the rest of the old classics. Honestly, that is the best I could hope for. I only see one problem. While the Enclave appearing in the next Fallout game would be better in many ways because it would allow more freedom than 76 in terms of narrative, 76, I have to admit, is also a good game to go on an Enclave hiatus with. Apart from the time period being good to explore a different Enclave, and the location being perfect to explore Mount Weather, I mean, come on, they've got to be at Mount Weather. Like, seriously, Mount Weather is the best place for them to be, please, Bethesda. Anyway, on top of that, Fallout 76 is kind of the perfect game to end Fallout on, and I might make a video to talk about this more. What I mean more specifically is the end of Fallout as we know it. In 76, we've got so much of the old Fallout in it. Some may say it's crammed in haphazardly, I'll only say that at least there's good parts in all of it. We've got Super Mutants, Death Claws, Rad Scorpions, the Brotherhood, the Enclave, we're still using Bottle Caps somehow. It's basically all old Fallout put in one package. It's like one last hurrah, a tired and old hurrah, but one nonetheless. This is where you can leave all the old stuff behind. Like I said before, the next Fallout games can take us to new lands, show us new factions and new creatures. This I think could very much work. In fact, there's already rumours that there's a new character working for the Enclave in 76, and it's a political statement. I wouldn't care about Bethesda breaking law like this if it's a background character. They did it with Burke, and at the very least they explained it somewhat. The fact that this character could be used to introduce the new Enclave, to introduce us to their rebirth into the new era, is not a good sign. I'll give Bethesda the benefit of the doubt here and say that it was an oversight, or maybe when this character talks about management, that's not actually the Enclave and we've just been baited. After all, it wouldn't be fair to criticise it until it is elaborated on further, and especially considering this information is from the PTS, which is subject to change, it just smells a bit fishy in here, and I hope they don't squander this chance like they have before. Otherwise, that's all I have to say on the matter. Except, um, they better be at Mount Weather. Like, if they're not at Mount Weather, I'm gonna get so goddamn angry. I'm, I'll tell you what, Mount Weather, I've spent so much time looking at...